It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm Roland Boyden. I'm going to say, if I wait long enough, maybe alongside Joe Bushy, if I stall, then just maybe I will be alongside Joe Bushy as we... 5.45 uh, Live! There we go. <laughs> Sit down on this 5.47.14 Live edition here. Friday night, Joe. We're getting into the weekend. We'll try and make it quick, but not too quick, because i got a bunch of good clips I'm really liking the script that we've got going here. Do we get and this uh, dazzling hand of God. Oh, we'll talk about him. In fact, I think I just have wing it in the script for that part. Because <laughs> uh, I know you were there. Maybe you can talk a little bit about it. Um, okay. What do we even do here these days? Let's, uh, let's talk about what's coming up. And that's you. You got your teleprompter. Hey, tonight, Wyndham County gonna... reps weigh in on Vermont's fracking ban. Senator Aluzzi comes to town. Oops. Seveds tries for the big bucks with a select board and more. And we do, right it in, we do it in 15 minutes. That's the, uh, the big gimmick here. You got plenty of time uh, to stick with us here, even if you've got an attention span, kind of like mine. And, uh, or Joe's for that matter. <laughs> they call us ADD Live. Yeah. Um, 15 minutes, really uh, <laughs> not even that. Uh, we're gonna jam pack it in and still uh, give you enough time to get uh, over to Brian Williams and the six o'clock news, all that and more. It's 5.45 Live. Everything that I've read from Sevens, I've read the glossy uh, 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 booklet that was made available before the last meeting. I've been through all these materials. I think the diagnosis is clear. What I want is act measurable action steps. Part of me wants to know how we measure that this money is being used appropriately before we're uh, just saying, here's the money. If, if I'm gonna support giving $50,000, this goes back to the accountability. This to me, you know, isn't $50,000. So I wanna know where the $50,000 that came from the state went. A promissory note of $50,000, what does that do for you right now? Gives us a challenge grant to yes. go talk to other communities and yes. say, we've gotten a pledge from Brown Roll, would you? And, and it's for spending for next year. Welcome back uh, to this May 18th. I think that's yes, I think that's is. the date. It's Friday. 18. It's May 18th. 19. May 18th, uh, 2012 edition of 545 Live. That's footage of uh, a heated Brattleboro Select Board showdown on Tuesday after Sevids, or the Southeastern Vermont Economic Development Strategies Group, asked the town for an additional $50,000 to continue their work studying the economic trends in the area and developing a plan of action to combat the overwhelming problems the county faces. Uh, this was something that town manager Barb Sondag said the town desperately needs. Let's see if I've got that clip for us. Personally, I think the board should just not approve the 50000 I think I would I would th approve a, a lesser amount, but I think that there has to be some seed money given to the only group that's trying to work on a county level for economic development. Barb Sondag at Tuesday's select board meeting urging the board to support Seved's request. The board did approve $25,000 up front and the other $25,000 if the group can raise a matching fifty dollars from the other towns in the county, but not before select board members put their feelings on the matter out on the table. To say that they're disingenuous of where this is going to go is offensive to me because I know these people. Now, no one gets a free pass. I don't think they're looking for a free pass. All right, moving on. Fracking is uh, the buzzword uh, as of late. Let's see what the script has to say about it, if it backs me up there. Uh, deposits deep beneath the northern part of the state could yield natural gas, but Vermonters may never know after the moratorium on the controversial extraction process known as fracking was upped to an all-out ban uh, by the Senate and signed into law by Governor Shumlin on Wednesday, a move he says is necessary to keep Vermonters safe. This bill will ensure that we do not inject chemicals into groundwater in a desperate pursuit for energy. The environmental impact of fracking is still largely unknown, with conflicting reports continuing to surface, something Wyndham 4 Rep David Dean says played a large role in the legislature's decision to stop natural gas exploration in Vermont. Vermont was, in fact, the first state in the country to uh, enact an all-out ban on fracking. That's right, another, uh, another first for Vermont here. Right. All right, uh, let's... David Dean coming up. The science is a mess in terms of what the impact 
of that technique of uh, exploring for gas and oil and in fact capturing it. Um, and at this point, uh, there are conflicting studies done by industry, done by the government. Uh, and while the jury's out on this science, Dean's district partner, Mike Merwicki, says uh, the impact of our uh, non-environmental impact uh, should be well known by now. Let's see what he has to say. This is not just fracturing the environment, but it's fracturing communities, right. where communities are being torn apart over the contentiousness of whether this is polluting, whether it isn't, the, the influx of people into small communities. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of planning that goes into where, where they start drilling and the, and the consequences of it. And it's one of the things I think Vermont does very well in. Oh, hit your All camera right. here, Joe. Dummerston, Putney, and Westminster district mates, reps Mike Morwicki and David Dean, when they sat down in our newly renovated studio yesterday to break down the 2012 session. That program can be found next week on BCTV Channel 10 and on our video on demand on www.bradabrilltv.org in both standard and high definition. Make sure you watch it and all the other good programs on there and all you need to know on that same www. It's quite a website, and uh, I, I'm loving our video on demand. In fact, uh, for those people out there who aren't actually watching it at 553.26 here, uh, be sure to check it out in HD. We've got two links that we put up. However, I just want to warn people, Joe, if they're watching it in HD and it just says buffering over and over again, I know that drives me nuts, totally nuts. So then uh, right. there's another link for uh, you know a, a, a dumbed-down broadband resolution version. So, All right, uh, let's see. Am I next here? Uh, speaking uh, of uh, the session, 2012 legislative session, Senator Aluzzi was in town yesterday. Uh, Joe, I didn't get any farther in the script than that, but you were there, so perhaps you can uh, shed a little light here. First in the morning, Senator Aluzzi met with Tim Johnson at the Crosby House on Western Avenue, and they had a little head-to-head um, -head conversation about the state of affairs in southern Vermont and Wyndham County in particular. And then we moved on from there to uh, Glen Park, where the senator looked over, you know, the state of Tri Park, Glen Park in particular, where they suffered uh, really most of the damage, and they uh, uh, got to find out firsthand from the senator uh, about legislation that he had passed that gave them specific compensation. I believe it was thirty thousand two hundred or thirty thousand seven hundred dollars. Maybe you have it in the clip there. I do but, indeed. Uh, That's the the uh, clip of choice here. So. Yeah, I mean, it meant it meant that the legislation he he worked on enacting meant specifically that some of those residents that were there that day, in particular, uh, one uh, uh, Sylvia Renfrew, who lived on Melrose Street when I was in grade school and my friend Tony and I used to run across her lawn and, and you know I, I when I saw her there that day I, I remembered those days and uh, and she remembered us and too in fact she was the one that actually sold that property that is now Melrose Terrace to the town it used to be a chicken farm and uh, uh, she is actually now because of that legislation going to get to get a new home and she wow. she wasn't before so she's going to get that 30,000 uh, compensation and she's going to get her home was a total loss so Wow, what a story. Let's yeah. see what uh, Lucy has we to say. We appropriated $1.5 million in the form of appropriations and tax credits uh, to assist individuals with purchasing mobile homes and in developing mobile home parks. As we improve the quality of mobile home parks, maybe move them out of the floodplains where many of them find themselves, uh, perhaps they will uh, be re viewed by others as they are by us as probably the most affordable form of housing that you can have in Vermont. Senator Luzzi uh, in Brattleboro, Joe, just before we move on to the next story, I want to promote that uh, that full day uh, with him and its various segments will be shown uh, live on BCTV. You were there to catch all of it. Uh, also, uh, BCTV producer M. Richards there as well for yeah. part of that uh, leg of the trip. And others followed him to Bellas Falls, too, for the uh, productions up there, correct? Plenty of programming. Yeah. A really interesting piece. And, you know, I think in the, all this discussion of affordable housing, people forget mobile homes in that, in that talk and uh, to, to come out. And, and point out just how affordable they can be, especially with the support that he's putting into it. Mobile homes and manufactured housing have always been the most affordable type of housing out there. The, the first step on the ladder of equity for many people, it was for me when my son was first born 29 years ago. And uh, I wouldn't have started out to own a home were it not for the inexpensive mobile home I was able to own right there in Mountain Home Park, which is part of Tri Park now. So uh, 
And yeah, like, uh, what the, one of the things the senator recognized was the fact that uh, that there's has in fact been a stigma attached to uh, just the development of mobile home parks in general, uh, as if it's a blight on the neighborhood, almost akin to that S word that I won't mention just to keep it off our broadcast, but one that's a highly contested one here in town. But uh, and, and part of the legislation he enacted was to prevent uh, any sort of discrimination through zoning or any other legislation. Uh, treating the mobile homes any differently or mobile homes or manufactured housing as is the slightly more uh, politically correct term <laughs> if there could be such a thing for yeah. a, a housing so. structure all right next the evermont community broadband project's latest initiative has deployed a team of internet interns across the state to help vermonters uh, up their computer skills a service intern todd gratton says can help uh, people in every facet of their lives it's really anything from turning on a computer to knowing what a mouse is to going up and filling out uh, internet forms helping with job applications helping them get email uh, even facebook so they can reconnect with their family Grant works two hours a day, three days a week, out of Goodrick Memorial Hospital in Newport. The service is free and serves, he says, primarily seniors. You can find out more about the project at e4vt.org. Next, if you're someone who grew up thinking of caffeine as a guilty pleasure, you might be able to drop the guilt with a slew of new studies indicating benefits from increased antioxidants all the way up to offsetting Alzheimer's and dementia. Last week, Bradable Memorial Hospital cardiologist Dr. Mark Berg sat down with WTSA's Tim Johnson. Caffeine gets a very bad rap it doesn't really deserve. Almost all the literature about caffeine and coffee are that it's healthy. All right, better get the mics on for that one. Uh, just a few things to wrap up, Joe, as we uh, have precious little time left, one minute. Um, I want to just uh, talk oh, what quickly. What have we got left to plug? I got to talk about the weather here quickly, oh. which is from BUHS TV. Let's jump right into it. All right. Yeah. So today you got yourself a high of 73. Might get cooler later in the evening. Uh, Tomorrow, you know, you got yourself a high 80. It's going to be real nice. And then Sunday. Awesome weekend. 83. 83. It's blazing out there. Blazing hot. So, uh, keep your sunscreen also on. Also, on the Doppler. Up it, here. Right there's whoa, Vermont. Whoa. Uh, no, clouds. no clouds. It's going it's to be sick. Clear as the day is long. It's going to be <laughs> stellar. All right, so back to the Take desk. Back. back to our desk. Stellar. All right, now we got uh, 20 seconds, Joe, so I'll say uh, for BCTV and 545 Live, thanks to uh, all involved in 545 Live content specialists, Paige Martin, Ian Keel, Maria Dominguez, uh, hardworking intern Nolan Edgar, who had his last day this week. Monday, we'll be uh, doing a best of Nolan highlight reel. Can't help but watch the clock count down behind me, Joe, with only five seconds left. I'll say uh, thanks for joining me at the desk. Have a good weekend, everybody. Time. Good night. But now, yeah, I mean, it's there's levels on the record device, so this is this will record it, but nobody will hear it live. It's 5:45 p.m., which means it's time nothing. Okay. Hi, it's time for BCTV's nightly news roundup. It's time for BCTV's nightly news roundup. I don't know. Wait, you getting it? For BCTV's nightly news roundup. Hi, BCTV, they've got a roundup, everybody! BCTV in Spanish, Base TV. Doesn't get any better than that. Sound it is, not that they really ever need to hear us. Clearly it's all about the looks. Party up, party up, party up.